This goes out to every outcast Said they just don't quite fit in Every wrong way, runaway rebel So ashamed of where you've been This goes out to every searcher Trying to fill that empty space Well, your searching days are over now Everything's about to change Come on down Hi everyone, good morning and welcome to Medford UMC. My name is Rich Finley, thanks for being with us today. Pastor Joe is on a renewal leave starting this Sunday, but we're so excited to welcome the Reverend Dr. Rich Hendrickson to our pulpit with a message entitled Streams of Living Water. We're very happy to have Rich join us again here at Medford UMC. Rich is a retired United Methodist elder living in Morristown, New Jersey with his wife, the Reverend Dr. Gina Hendrickson who serves as the senior pastor of First Methodist Church in Morristown. We thank him for being with us to preach and preside at the table today. If you're joining us in person today, please take a minute to check in on Facebook. If you're online, please take a moment to share the live stream. If you're here in the room, the ushers will come around soon with, in just a moment with some red attendance pads. We hope that you'll let us know that you've been here and if you're visiting, share your contact information so we can let you know what's going on here at the church. If you're online with us today, you can do the same at medfordumc.org forward slash Sunday. There you can record your attendance and also find other ways to connect, including a link to the weekly announcements. If you want to check it out, you can also scan the QR code on the back of the seat in front of you. With that, we have two announcements today. The first one, I'll turn it over to Danny. Good morning. I'm Danielle Adams, one of the outreach co-chairs. Thank you to all who have donated money school supplies through our Amazon wish list, or dropping off a filled backpack this week. We are now entering into our final week. If you would like to help, there are still two ways. 
The first way is monetarily, so that we can purchase the last of our needed school supplies. And second is through your volunteering. We will be stuffing the backpacks next Sunday, August 11th, following both church services. All are welcome. Thank you. The second announcement I want to lift up today is that this Tuesday is National Night Out. This is a free Medford community event sponsored by the Medford Police Department in coordination with a lot of local businesses and organizations. Come join us at our tent in Freedom Park and enjoy the festivities of the evening. If you'd like to help greet our neighbors at our tent, please use the link that's in the weekly newsletter to sign up or contact the church office if you'd like to sign up. With that, I'll turn it over to Nate. Good morning, welcome to our time of worship. Let's stand together. Enter in. All right, let's sing. And now I'm coming with a heart of worship. I'm bringing in a brand new song. I'm ready to see the unthinkable, and I'm ready for a miracle. Hearts praying for a fresh encounter, souls looking to the living God. I'm ready for a real revival, oh Holy Spirit. Come like a flood, like a fire, Holy Spirit fall in this place, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. We're on the edge of a new beginning. God, we know you have so much more. We're looking to a new horizon. Praying for your rain to pour, an overflowing of true redemption, an overflowing of your kingdom. We're ready for a new revival. Oh, Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, fall in this place, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood. Can you feel it? Heaven is reaching. Oh, can you hear it? Our God is speaking. Oh, can you see it? God's got your healing. Just receive it. Receive the freedom. Oh, can you feel it? Heaven is reaching. Oh, can you hear it? Our God is speaking. Oh, can you see it? God's got your healing. Just receive. Just receive it. Receive the freedom. Come like a flood, like a fire. The Holy Spirit fall in this place. Fill our hearts. Like holy water on my 
are going to take a moment as the band plays to greet one another. Let's go ahead and do that now. to pray together. God, we invite you here today. God, we thank you for this time of fellowship and praise. Lord, open our hearts, open our minds now as we prepare to receive your holy word. God, we ask this in your holy name we pray. Amen. Oh, there I am. All right, good morning, everyone. Kids, I'd like to invite you up for our children's moment. Mrs. Carl's going to actually sit down on the floor because I have things I want to kind of lay out here. How are you doing, Avery? How are you doing, Nico? Are you good? I'm sure I'm going to say hi because I'm sure we're waiting for some friends. Hi, how are you? Good morning. I heard you were up super late. I'm so proud of you for being here still. I think there's some grown-ups that probably aren't here because they were up super late. So good job. So if you don't know, there, there is a special event that happens in Medford Lakes called Canoe Carnival. And they, they build these cool floats and they float them around the lake. But what was the weather doing last night? Raining and raining and raining and raining. So they had to keep the, and like, lightning. and light the lightning. Do you like, does that make you nervous? It makes me nervous. Yeah, lightning and thunder. Oh, you listen to Ghostbusters, so you're not scared of the lightning? That's a really smart thing. I like that. Your mom and dad are super smart for giving you that. Yeah, it's awesome. It's your favorite song. That's a pretty cool song. I agree. Well, yeah. 
Awesome. Do you see yourself waving your hand up and down? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're, guess what? So what is rain? Rain is what? It's water from the sky. Good job, Avery. You saw my jug of water. I, that was like my, my hint, right? And I've got these water droplets here. We're going to talk about water. We're not going to talk about water that comes from the sky, but we're going to talk about water. So I'm going to call on my readers. Who's a reader? Who can read? Avery, can you read this first one for me? Up to 60% of the human body is made of water. Wow, that's a lot, right? So our bodies are made up of 60%. Now, my, my next question to you is, do you want to guess which part of the body has the most water content in it? Like, which has the most water? What's your guess, Nico? Your stomach? That's a good guess, but your stomach is not on the list. No. It's in here. Go ahead, say it again back there, Dylan. Your brain. Your brain has 80% water in it. So of that 60%, that muscle, the brain has 60% water. Isn't that cool? The least is our bones. Our bones have the least amount of water in them. All right, so who else is a reader? Do you want to read the next one? Less than 1% of the Earth's water can be used to drink. 1% is not a lot, but guess what? That means all, if the ocean water, look at this number. Can you see this number? Look at all those numbers in that one number. It's so many numbers that I had to get, ask my smart, math smart uh, son to tell me what this would actually be. Um, and it's 352 quintillion, 670 quadrillion. So that's the number of this gallon of jugs, this gallon jug of water that the ocean can fill. That's how many of this we would have if we filled all the water. So that means 1% of that is still a lot, but we have to take care of it, okay? That's what I was trying to tell you about. That's a lot of water though, isn't it? Look at that number, kind of crazy, right? All right, Nico, do you want to read one? What do you think? That's okay. Do you want to read this one? Water regulates the Earth's temperature. Okay. Do you know it also regulates our bodies? So the more water we drink, the more our temperature, our body temperature is regulated. It makes us healthy, okay? Emma, do you want to come read one? <laughs> read this stuff right there. Ice is lighter than water, which is why it floats in the water. All right, that's kind of cool, right? That's a cool fact about water, because usually solids are heavier. But when it comes to water, when you freeze water and make it ice, that makes it lighter. And that's why if I put ice in this jug, what would happen if I dropped ice in there? It would sit up on top. That's how it floats, right? Right? All right. Avery, go ahead. Read this one. A person can live only about a week without water. Only about a week. But what I understood is after three days, it's not very easy to live. So it actually only takes three days before it's hard to live and function if you don't drink water. A week is the longest. Do you want to read that one? This one's kind of a cool one, too. I like this one. Discovered water in the form of ice on the moon. Good job, Nico. You were very brave. You did a great job. So that's a pretty cool fact about water, right? We don't just have it on the earth. But you know, I wanna know, I wanna let you know a couple cool things about what water does for our body. It carries nutrients and oxygen to all parts of our body, all the cells of our body. It helps our stomach digest food better. It makes our, the toxins, the bad things that we get from like maybe pollution in the air, it flushes that out of our body. 
It makes our blood pressure healthy if we drink enough water. And our, our joints that get creaky and maybe sore from growing fast, right? Sometimes you might have a bone sore or your elbow might get sore or your knees because you're just growing so fast. More water helps that not hurt as much. And as some of us older folks, we need it because our, our joints get old. So more water helps, okay? And like I said, it regulates body temperature. Do you think water is important? Yes. It is important. Yes. Why would you say it's important? Because we were hearing all this talk about it, and now I know that it's important. So back health, did you have a different answer? Why is, why is water important? Because um, it helps you live. It helps you live, right? That's right, it helps you live. I was thinking that, do you wanna know, do you wanna tell me why water is important? Yeah, because it's going to be so yummy. Oh, water's yummy, do you like drinking water? I'm a big water drinker, I really like it, but sometimes it tastes better if you put like lemon in it, or some, sometimes cucumber. Not everyone loves cucumber. Do you want something to share about water? It helps the body um, stay energized. Very good. We need en it gives us energy, right? So to me, I'm thinking of like when we have plants and flowers, they need to grow. Like we can visually see what water does for our plants, right? It's been so dry. I've had trouble keeping my plants alive because of how hot it's been and how little water we've been getting consistently. So it's been drying things out. That's the same things for our body, right? So it keeps us going. It energizes us. That was a good word. It feeds us and nourishes us and it heals. Like I was saying about the joints, right? It helps heal. So do you want to know why I'm talking about water today at church? Should we get to that point, right? I've been telling you a lot about water. Okay, so here is the story that we're going to hear today about Jesus. He goes to a festival. So it's a festival like a party, lots of people, right? He does. He goes, he sees friends, he worships in the temple, just like we're here worshiping at church, and they have a great time. On the very last day of the festival, Jesus and his friends were in a crowd around the temple. Jesus stood up with where everyone could see him, and he starts shouting. He says, hey, everybody, if any one of you are thirsty, come here to me. Take a big drink of what I give you. Then you'll have living water inside you flowing out of your heart. Does that sound confusing? I think, I think the people were confused. And I think it can be confusing. And he says, he goes on, he says, everyone who believes in me will get God's Holy Spirit. Have we, you heard about the Holy Spirit before, right? The Holy Spirit comes into your lives like cool, refreshing water in your dry and thirsty hearts. So that's God inside us, right? Jesus in our hearts. And so people are like, this seems a little fishy. Like they were a little bit doubtful. Have you ever heard something and kind of been like, I don't know about that. I'll have to think on that a little. Have you ever heard that, heard something and go, hmm, that's, that seems funny. But Jesus goes on, he says, no, really, it's true. Remember when the prophets, and those were the people from the Old Testament, said, everyone who is thirsty, come and drink for free? That was about Jesus, about how people could come and hear Jesus' teaching, how we learn from Jesus' life. Remember when the prophet said, if you believe, you'll have a spring of living water inside? Well, that's about Jesus, too. So the people continued to question. Let me finish, and you can ask me some questions when we leave, okay? When the Holy Spirit, Holy, everyone put your fist right up on, on your heart. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you'll be so full of life and light that you'll start bringing life and light. Make it go out to your hand. Go like this in your heart and bring it out. And it will go out to the people around you. Kind of give it to the people around this circle here, right? And maybe to, out to our church family, right? So it's in here. We drink that water, right, that living water that we learn from Jesus' teaching, it goes to our heart, and then we go out. Can we try it again? So pretend like you're drinking. It's in your heart, and then it goes out, right? So like water, our belief in Jesus nourishes us. It gives us life and light. 
Like water, our belief in Jesus nourishes us. Just like we should keep drinking water, we should keep coming to church and growing in our faith. And just like when we drink water, it helps our body function its best. Growing in faith helps the Holy Spirit, right? Right in our heart. Find your heart again. The Holy Spirit stays strong in our hearts so we can share that life and light with the world. Put your hand out. And the people around us, right? What do you think about that? So water is a good image of what Jesus does for us. Can we pray? Here we go. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and for the lessons he teaches us. When we drink our water to stay hydrated, help us remember you. We should drink from your living water and allow the Holy Spirit to grow in us. Help us share light and love in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for talking with me. Kids' church is going to happen. You can go find Mrs. Frame and Mrs. Ritter. Today's reading comes from the Gospel of John, the seventh chapter, beginning with verse 37. On the final and climactic day of the feast, Jesus took his hand, took his stand. He cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Rivers of living water will brim and spill out of the depths of anyone who believes in me this way, just as the scripture says. He said this in regard to the spirit whom those who believed in him were about to receive. The spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Those in the crowd who heard these words were saying, this has to be the prophet. Others said, he is the Messiah. But others were saying, the Messiah doesn't come from Galilee, does he? The word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be back with you on this uh, I had written in my sermon, Glorious Morning. I was hoping for the best uh, this morning. Uh, interesting morning, I'll say, given the uh, number of trees and debris that's down all over the uh, roads on the way here. But it's good to be with you on this first Sunday of August, 2024. Can't imagine that it's already August and we're, uh, we're in the, the heading into what typically is the dog days of summer. And I'm hoping that's not the case. I want to begin this morning by uh, thanking Pastor Joe for the invitation to come back and be with you this morning. I also want to uh, pray for Pastor Joe to have a blessed and productive renewal leave. Um, renewal leaves only come around every four years, so I know from personal experience how important these times can be to help renew and re rejuvenate our spirits uh, as pastor and, and help us um, to re-energize ourselves. I also want to start with a bit of a disclaimer this morning. Um, we're going to take a rather circuitous, I, ca I can't say it. <laughs> Thank you, what he said. <laughs> we're going to take a little wandering path on our sermon this morning from our starting point to our final uh, destination. And I invite you to think of it this way. We're going to go from Medford to Tabernacle by way of Cherry Hill. And actually this morning that's kind of appropriate given the number of detours uh, we had to take to get here from Morristown. But we, uh, I promise, are gonna arrive exactly where we need to be just at the right time. So I encourage you and invite you to hang in there. Even when you think I might be off on an exit ramp, uh, we'll, we'll be there, we'll be there. So let's, let's get started. I'm not sure if I shared with you uh, the last time I was here that I was born and raised in Ocean Grove. How many of you are familiar with, uh, with Ocean Grove, used to be kind of referred to as the Methodist Holy Lands 
of New Jersey. Uh, it's, it started as a Methodist holiness camp, camp meeting back in 1869, and uh, it holds on to some of those original holiness roots even up till today. And Ocean Grove was a very unique place to grow up. Um, it had something called blue laws. And blue laws were, were laws that were passed and enforced that basically the idea was to govern behavior so that the whole town reflected its Christian heritage and the presence of God in its midst. Most of the blue laws that I remember had to do with life on Sundays in the small uh, square mile. It had to do with things that you couldn't do on Sundays particularly. And it was based on what the founding fathers believed were proper Christian behavior. So here's some of the things that we were not allowed to do on Sunday growing up in Ocean Grove. You cannot ride your bicycle. Terribly sinful activity on a Sunday to ride your bike. You couldn't play ball in the street or in the parks or anywhere else for that matter. You could not garden or what are your plants? You couldn't hang your laundry out to dry. That was a thing back in the old days. You used to hang your laundry out to dry, not on Sundays. All the stores, bank, shops, etc., were all closed for business. And here was the big one. No driving on Sunday. Not only couldn't you drive on Sunday, but you actually had to park your car off the street from midnight Saturday to midnight Sunday. Since 99% of the houses didn't have garages, you would have to drive your car to Asbury Park or to Neptune or to Bradley Beach and park your car in somebody else's town from midnight Saturday to midnight Sunday. My parents actually rented a small garage in Bradley Beach every Saturday we took the car over and every Monday morning we walked back and picked it up again. From midnight Saturday to midnight Sunday, these huge big chains used to be put across all of the entrance roads leading into Ocean Grove so that no way could anybody come in by accident and drive on Sunday morning. Just a quick aside, we had two police cars in town and yes, on one particular Sunday morning, they actually ran into each other. They got to the same intersection assuming nobody else would be on the roads and sure enough, bang. Those two officers never ever lived that down. One particular Sunday afternoon, it was the spring of 1976, I was dozing on the couch watching the Yankees and I heard the fire horn go off. I don't know if Medford has a fire horn or where you live has a fire horn, but we had a fire horn back in the day and it would go off signaling that somewhere in town there was the report of a fire. Most of the time, thankfully, it was a false alarm. But in the case of an actual fire, especially on Sundays, since the fire trucks were the only ones that were allowed to drive in town, it was important to get to the firehouse as quickly as possible and go check out the report, the alarm, that had come in. So I jumped up from the couch, ran out of the house, headed off towards the nearest firehouse, which was about five blocks away. I came around a corner from New York Avenue onto Heck Avenue, and I realized to my dismay, I didn't have to worry about getting to the firehouse because the fire was right in front of me. Middle of a block, two-story house, smoke and flames pouring out of the second floor. So the fire truck pulled up around the same time I got to the house. I put on my gear, I grabbed the hose, and with two other firemen, we started to pour water in the front door and up the steps that were right inside the front door. Downstairs was one apartment, upstairs was another apartment. Now we were making pretty good headway against the flames and actually had made it up about halfway up the stairs when something very unexpected happened. The water, which up until then was pouring out of, the, out of the hose, out of the nozzle, stopped to a trickle and then stopped altogether. You see, we had gone through the 1,500 gallons of water from the fire truck in about three or four minutes. 
and any headway we had made uh, into the flames was quickly lost, and we had to back down the stairs and quickly get out of the house. Now, it only took a few minutes for the truck to get hooked up to a fire hydrant, and once that happened, the, the water again was flowing freely and forcefully from the novel, and we were able to get back to work and attacking the fire. Eventually, we were able to knock it down, and um, in the process, thanks be to God, we saved the gentleman that lived on the second floor, we saved his cat, and we even saved his goldfish, although I'm not sure it would have qualified as sushi at that moment. That was supposed to be a little levity. So you're okay to laugh. We, we did save it, and it lived. All right. <laughs> How are we doing, all right? You're with me so far? We're kind of in, in the Cherry Hill area right now. We're getting ready to turn and, and come back. So I learned a valuable firefighting lesson that day, and that's this. Water can only flow for so long if it's not hooked up to a source. Water can only flow so long if it's not hooked up to a source. Friends, that lesson has come back to me over and over again throughout my life, not just about fighting fires, but about life in general, about relationships and spiritual, emotional, physical health, community participation, and even being a good citizen in the world. Water can only flow so long if it's not hooked up to a source. Jesus said, out of the believer's heart shall flow streams or rivers of living water. When I read these words of Jesus, this is what I hear him saying to me. If you believe in me, there ought to be evidence in the way that you live, the way that you speak, the way you treat others, in the way you conduct business, in the way you spend your money, in the way you spend your time, and the way you act towards those on the margins of life and society, even in how we treat our enemies. Friends, out of our hearts, as believers in Jesus should flow streams of living water. As the children's moment, so I almost got up and said what she said, and then sat down again. It was beautiful, beautiful explanation of how important water is. Water brings forth life. It nurtures and feeds us and all living things. It allows crops to glow, grow and flourish and produce fruit. Water is crucial for life in general, life on this planet, crucial for the planet itself. Water even puts out fires, real ones and metaphorically. And, and so to draw the correlation to Jesus' words, the living water flowing through our lives and out into the world as believers in Jesus ought to nurture and feed. It ought to bring forth and maintain life for ourselves, yes, but also for others and for the world around us and for the world in general. So I come away with these words of Jesus with two major takeaways. The first is our lives, yours and mine, and ours together ought to be conduits for God's Holy Spirit. Conduits flowing through. The water comes in and it flows out. And that's what Jesus is talking about when he says living water. Here's how a condiment for living water works. We receive the Holy Spirit and then allow it or free it or help it or get out of the way so it can do its work as it flows through our lives and out into the world around us. Now the outflow is critical for our lives and for the work of the Holy Spirit in the world. How many of you ever heard of the Dead Sea? Do you know why the Dead Sea is dead? There's no outflow. It receives the water from the Jordan River and then the water has nowhere to go. There's no outflow on the other side and it just sits there and in the hot Middle Eastern sun, it just evaporates and life is not possible because the mineral content just keeps building up more and more and more. If the water that Jesus spoke of is going to be living water in our lives, it has to have an outflow. 
It has to have a place or, or places to go once it comes into our lives. In other words, the gifts of the Holy Spirit is not a, just a personal gift for us to flow in us, but it's a gift to flow in us and through us and out into the world in meaningful ways. Jesus didn't say, out of the believer's heart shall store up, shall hoard, shall bottle up, shall keep to themselves all the living water. No, he said, out of the believer's heart shall flow streams, rivers of living water. Not even a trickle, but, but streams and rivers. If the fire truck that day and the story I used had received all the water it could from the hydrant, but there was nothing coming out of the hose, it eventually shuts down. And it doesn't provide any relief or do what it's designed to do. So I have found the second takeaway, which brings us back to our fire truck analogy. Again, water can only flow for so long if it's not connected to a source. Living water can also flow only so long if it's not connected to a source. I have found out over the years, and I'm gonna repeat this because I think it's worth hearing again, the rate of flow of the living water of the Holy Spirit flowing in and through my life is in direct correlation to how strongly I am connected to the source of that water, which is Jesus Christ. Here goes, here goes again. The rate of flow of the living water of the Holy Spirit flowing in and through my life is in direct correlation to how strongly I am connected to the source of that living water, which is Jesus Christ. Make sense? So here's a few things that help me stay connected to the source. Here's what helps me keep the living water flowing in and through my life. One is attending worship weekly. And that is spelled W-E-E-K-L-Y, by the way. It's another one of those moments you missed. <laughs> Reading and studying scripture regularly, daily. Spending time in prayer. Participating in various opportunities for fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Joining others in community outreach and, and mission opportunities that, that God gives uh, us to, to be together as a, a church and to reach out in the community and make a difference. Though that helps me stay connected to Christ. And also giving generously to the mission and ministries of the body of Christ. I can't always go, but I can be a part of it through my giving. These are all ways for me that help me stay connected to the source of the living water again, that is Jesus. So friends, we have arrived at our destination. Right on time, by the way. But here's the ultimate challenge for us this morning as I see it, this world we live in is in crisis, parched, it's dry tinder, it's dying of thirst. It is desperate for water and we know the water that it's desperate for is the water, the living water of Jesus Christ. It, Jesus starts this pronouncement at the festival by saying, Come and drink of the water that I offer. When he says this to the woman at the well, he says, if you drink of this water, you'll never be thirsty again. Come and drink of the living water. Friends, this world we live in is desperate for the living water of Jesus Christ. Water that will bring forth life. Water that will nourish and feed. Water that will bear fruit. And yeah, that'll even put out fires. Water that will make a difference in the world. And maybe for, for some in the world, it will make all the difference in the world. So I pray that you and I can be conduits of the living water of Jesus Christ. That we will commit to doing what's necessary to stay connected to the source of that living water. And at the same time, ensuring that there are plenty of places for that water to go. Go in the name of Christ. 
go for the sake of Christ and go for the sake of this wonderful, beautiful world in which we live. May it be so for you and for me. Let us pray. Oh God, there's a wonderful song that I learned as a kid and it it speaks of the water that flows in us and the water that flows out of us. I have the river of life flowing in my life. I have the river of life flowing out of me. And God, that is a, a constant encouragement, word of hope and challenge for us as believers in Jesus that we will be always those with the river of life flowing in us and with the river of life flowing out of us out of us give us the courage and the wisdom and the strength to be conduits of the living water of Christ conduits of your holy spirit it's in Jesus name we pray amen In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only we believe, we believe in this broken generation. When all is dark, you help us see. There is only one salvation. We believe.
One of the dangers of having a lot of money is that you may be quite satisfied with the kinds of happiness money can give and so fail to realize your need for God. If everything seems to come simply by signing checks, you may forget that you are at every moment totally dependent on God. These words from C.S. Lewis remind us that we cannot exist apart from God's love for us. We give in response to God's gracious love that sustains us in every circumstance. Your generosity helps us to impart these spiritual truths to others. To make a gift, you can drop a check in the offering plate, visit medfordumc.org forward slash give, use our app, or send a check in the mail. However you give, we thank you so much for your support. We're going to move now into a a time of Holy Communion, and um, in the Methodist Church, we serve open communion. If you're not familiar with our, which means everyone is welcome to come to the table and to receive the elements, receive the body and blood of Christ, receive the blessing of, of God's Holy Spirit. If you are worshiping with us online, we invite you at this time to Go find uh, elements that you can use so that when we are sharing the bread and cup here uh, in this space, you can also partake uh, at home. So let's begin with the great, I want to make sure I'm, let's begin with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ, broken for you and for me. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of our sins. We'll be serving uh, communion this morning by intinction. There will be different stations uh, around our worship space. Please find the one that's uh, closest to you. And um, everything is gluten-free. So if that's a concern for you, um, there won't be any uh, issues of where you go. I'd like to invite the servers to come Uh, and receive this morning first, and then they will distribute the elements to you. If you uh, don't wish to 
participate in intinction, I'll be standing up here with a basket with the individual cups and wafers. to me. 
Let's enter into a time of prayer. I'll allow for some silence in the beginning. If you have prayer concerns or joys, please feel free to call them out or just name them quietly in your own heart, and then I'll close this. Let's pray together. God, we uh, come before you into your throne of grace, and we ask that you would hear our prayers and to answer them in your way, and we trust that your way is what's best for our lives and those that we lift up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we thank you for this day that you have given us to be alive and to be well and to be with you in this space with our brothers and sisters in Christ, both here and online. We thank you for the living water that is Jesus Christ. And we pray that as we go out into the world when the service is over, that we will be conduits of that living water to touch the world around us in ways that truly matter. Give us work to do and give us the strength and courage to do it, and give us a way through the power of your Holy Spirit to live lives worthy of your calling, and will share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world. It's in his name that we pray this, and, and we join our voices now as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now lift our voices together and be to stand as you're able.
Go with you and remain with you always. Amen.